Howdy! My name is Hannah Gooden, and I am a technical staff member at the Johns Hopkins University Applied Physics Lab. Today, I am going to walk you through how to use NeuroGlancer, a web-based interface developed at Google for viewing volumetric data. We use NeuroGlancer to visualize and explore neuroimaging datasets which are stored in BossDB. We have added some features to the NeuroGlancer code initially developed at Google and are hosting our own publicly available version within the BossDB ecosystem at neuroglancer.bossdb.io. The easiest way to get started is to go to the BossDB website, bossdb.org. Navigate to the Projects tab and choose a project that you'd like to explore. I am going to choose this one. On this page, you can see all sorts of information about the project. If you scroll all the way down to the bottom, there will be a link to view the project's image data in NeuroGlancer. We are now looking at 3D electron microscope images of a C. elegans brain. On the top right, you can see in white the X, Y, and Z coordinates of where we are currently located in the dataset. In gray, you can see the resolution of the dataset. This dataset has been imaged with a resolution of 2 nanometers in the X direction, 2 nanometers in the Y direction, and 30 nanometers in the Z direction. Below the coordinates, you can see the layers we have loaded into the viewer. This dataset contains one image layer, one segmentation layer, and one mesh layer. I'd like to walk through how to interact with each type of layer one at a time. I'll explain different controls you can use with the mouse, and corresponding keyboard shortcuts will be shown on the screen. First, let's interact with the image layer. I'll disable the segmentation and mesh layers so that we can focus only on the image layer. They'll be covered second and third. Let's look at some different ways you can explore this image layer. First, you can change the layout with which you view the data by using these buttons in the top right of the viewer window. There are three different views which you can toggle with these buttons. Currently, we are on the single panel view. Now, we are viewing the data in four panels. The top left is the XY view. The top right is the XZ view. The bottom right is the YZ view. And finally, the bottom left overlays all three of these views to show their three-dimensional relationship. Now, by clicking here, we are viewing the data in two panels, with one two-dimensional view and one three-dimensional view. But let's go back to the single panel view. Next, how do you navigate around the dataset? We can start by clicking and dragging the image. This allows us to move in any XY direction. Next, let's try scrolling the mouse wheel. This allows us to move in the Z direction. Finally, I'll hold the control key while scrolling. This allows us to zoom in and out. The effects of these three controls is amazing in the four panel layout. Since each 2D panel controls two out of three dimensions, moving a single image around also affects the others. You can also see the layers actively move in the 3D panel. Next, I'll open the settings panel for the image layer. I'll do this by right clicking the layers title to toggle the panel open. For a keyboard binding, you could also hit the key corresponding to the layer's number, in this case, 1. Here we can see all sorts of information about the layer. We can see the URL that we retrieved the data from, as well as metadata about the size of the dataset. Under the Rendering tab, we can change the way the data is shown visually. For example, you can invert the image's grayscale. Next, let's add back in the image segmentation layer which provides colored overlays of objects on top of the grayscale image layer that we're currently seeing. To do that, I'll click the layer's title up here. We can navigate around in much the same way we navigated the image layer, 
x, y, z, and zooming. The two layers are on the same coordinate frame, or are co-registered, and any navigation will occur for all of the layers that we are viewing. One additional feature of the segmentation layer is that you can double-click a segmented object to highlight it. Now we can explore the shape of these objects more easily. Next, I'll bring up the settings panel for the segmentation layer. You can see that there is an additional tab for this type of layer, SEG, short for segmentation. This tab displays all of the IDs of the segmented objects that are being displayed. I can use the search bar to add additional IDs as well. Now I'll deselect all of the IDs that I'm currently viewing so that we can see all of the segmented objects at once. That wraps up how to explore a segmentation layer in NeuroGlancer. Let's bring up the last layer, the mesh layer. Mesh layers are rendered in the 3D view, so I'll switch back to the two panel layout to better demonstrate this. To view one object at a time, we start by selecting one in the left panel. The object will then load in its 3D form in the right panel. To view metadata about objects, we can bring up the selection panel. The selection panel will show us what the values are that NeuroGlancer is reading for each layer. We can see that in the image layer, NeuroGlancer is reading an integer intensity that corresponds to the darkness of the pixels in the images. And in the segmentation layer, NeuroGlancer is reading an object ID. Each unique object has been colored to allow it to be discerned from other adjacent and nearby objects. This wraps up a demo of NeuroGlancer's basic features. This has by no means been an exhaustive list of ways that you can use NeuroGlancer, so for reference, or to revisit anything that I've said in this video, a large list of actions and keyboard shortcuts are viewable by clicking the question mark button in the top right of your screen or by hitting the H key. Thanks for watching, and we hope you enjoy using NeuroGlancer and BossDB.